Hi, it's Jeff here. Just before we start our latest Six Nations pod, just a quick word to remind you of the Harp and Guinness Pint Predictor League. Uh, congrats to Jack Fogarty for posting a superb score of 58 for this round. That puts him in first place overall and also into first place for the best score in one round, and that's going to be pretty hard to beat. Now, even though the Six Nations is two rounds in, you can still win yourself some free pints by first downloading the free Fanzo app, then joining our league. Just enter the code HARPIN, that's H-A-R-P-I-N, and keep forecasting the score in the remaining games in the tournament. Right, it's time to start harping on rugby. Right, gents, before we get to our main topic of discussion, we're going to go to a feature we call the Front Five, where we pick out five eye-catching, egg-chasing articles from around the rugby sphere, so we can offer a few quick thoughts. We're going to start with yourself, Mark. Your article comes from a, The Guardian. It's Michael Aylwin, and the headline is, Worcester Warriors change name and drop down leagues amid anger at RFU. Yeah, this is the proverbial cluster. You know, the next four letters that go with it. Um, after after Worcester were uh, thrown out unceremoniously for, for mounting, mounting debts, but with HMRC and with other debtors that they've taken over from, from COVID and pre-COVID as well, they've um, they've decided not to take up with their new consortium the, the offer of the championship place. Well, I say take up, they want to do it, but the RFU have apparently put a lot of steps in place that the RFU don't think they tick those boxes for. And... Um, the guy, Jim O'Toole, who's the head of this consortium, is an ex-director of, of Worcester, actually, and he's got in with a couple of ex-pros, and they've decided not to do what Wasps are doing next year and take up the offer to, of the championship. Um, to be honest with you, both teams should have been put down to the bottom of the leagues anyway, as has happened with my old club, Richmond, and London Welsh as well, and both of those teams had to take it, but for some reason, because of the English ring fencing at the moment, they like to preserve the teams that are there. Um, what they've done at the moment or their plan at the moment, there's still a few boxes to tick for them is to go down to at the moment, level six, which is, or will be it's level five, which is national two, which Starbridge RFC Starbridge RFC now have to have a vote amongst themselves on Friday to see if they're going to take up this deal. And funnily enough, Starbridge are way down in the relegation spot in that league. And they'll probably go down to level six, which is regional rugby, but still a, a pretty good standard for your, your normal average rugby player. But, they seem to have this sort of delusions of grandeur where they think ex Worcester professional players are going to come down and play at level six for next to nothing because there is financial limitations down at that level in terms of funding from the RFU, but also how much you can actually pay guys as well if you want to. And trust me, having coached and played it down at that level, guys get money for it. Um, so they not only did they have to take on the RFU decision, but they also have to see... Um, Starbridge themselves if they're going to go for it but also there's going to be uh, I think that pretty much covers the article but they're going to have to actually consult with Midlands Rugby Worcester Rugby other clubs in the area if they're unhappy with what's going to go down now a little caveat today in the rugby paper says the Steve Diamond led consortium is not dead because the RFU and HMRC and all those big lettered uh, conglomerates that need to pass all these things might actually pull the plug on what Worcester are planning to do. So keep an eye on this space. It's not finished just yet. When you say it's, I mean, like, so what would be possible? I mean, what would be the, the, the best result possible if that consortium came through? They would stay in the championship, but the they, championship, they, right. Okay. They would, they, they want, they, they claim they want to stay in the championship, but the RFU, because of their new due diligence laws as such and um, financial fair play and everything else, whatever terms that they keep using for it, apparently they're not happy with the current owners and how they can prove that they're the correct owners going forward. So nothing is, is ratified just yet. There's still a bit to do. Um, but if they don't get into the championship, they, their next option is, as I said, is to, is to take over Starbridge's first team, which is currently level five, probably be level six with relegation next year. And then they said that they would like to get back to Nat one, which is level three in, in three seasons. Like the, the word I use at the start, uh, you're shaking your head there. I'm shaking my head reading it today. I'm shaking my head reading it from Tuesday when some of the information started leaking out. And actually knowing a couple of the former Worcester players, they've already told them that this idea of Worcester players going down to that level 
Um, a lot of them have found occupation in other clubs. Example, Rory Sutherland has come to to Ulster for a six month contract, but those sort of guys are now playing. There's quite a few of them playing in national one and championship clubs here in England already, but also playing in Pro Div Two in France as well. You know, a lot of them have found short term contracts with other professional clubs. So why they would think? To be fair, they owe Worcester nothing. They've been shabbily treated by the club. Um, one of the interesting things are in the article is the debts that will be paid. The people that won't be getting paid are the employees. So there's a lot of employees there, both from a logistical point of view, a medical point of view, and the actual staff of Six Way Stadium themselves will not be getting paid um, from this new consortium on their, on their debt plan. Um, and then an, an even another little twist on it, Wasps, who are picking up their championship place, will actually be playing at Six Way Stadium mm. themselves. That's crazy. And it's like for every scenario you said there, I can imagine at least two or three other clubs being pissed off about it and getting involved in it as well. Because, it, I mean, when you when you mess around with divisions and put teams in here and slot teams in there, you're moving things around and it's affecting other teams. And it just, and the, it just seems you're, like it's you're not just get worse. Yeah, you're not just killing. They've, they've basically killed off the Worcester Warriors as mm. a team, as a, if you want to say franchise, to use the American term, or, or a brand. It, they, they've said it's dead. They're also killing Starbridge, yeah. which is a historical team and has a lot of pull in that, in that West Midlands area of, of England who produce, yeah, they may not be known worldwide or anything like that, but these are, these are clubs, no more than the junior clubs and the good senior clubs in Ireland. They feed into academy systems. They feed into... Um, county sides and, and getting guys exposure that really won't happen for them as a club anymore they will cease to exist as their historical name as well yeah it's just a, it's just a mess isn't it well yeah we'll see we'll, we'll see how it pans out and we should we certainly haven't heard the last of it i'd say 